Ah, a washer. Right. That's interesting. Okay. We have decided uh, to call this particular uh, section uh, Five Handy Tips for Using Sam Broadcaster. And uh, we've done tip number one, and this is tip number two. Uh, when it, our, so out of the box, Sam has some really weird uh, crossfading rules that applies to it. And this is what it looks like out of the box. And uh, what we um, have found, and this is for use, we're talking about use for uh, a continuous playback on a station, you know, not for mixing or that type of thing. Um, we're talking like, so a station that will play one song and it wants to nicely go into another one. Now, I want to give you some optimum settings for this, basically. So the tip is change these settings from the default because they are strange. Firstly, fade in. Why you would want to fade in on a track, I don't know. Um, because if it, if you actually notice or can observe a fade in, particularly at half a second, you can actually hear a track that is, has got a definite start, start, if you know what I mean. You can actually hear it fade up at the start, which is crazy. Why would you want that? But So, disable fade in, set this to zero seconds, and set this to 100%. And fade out, you can set that to about, so set that to about three seconds, and allow it to fade out fully. So you don't want it, you don't want to track, because if you've got a, if you've got an audio processor that really sort of pushes the level up, it sort of really expands and pushes the level up as it drops. If you've got it down here and the track's still playing at that point, you'll find that it just cuts off dead if your next track or um, if your next track is really, really quiet, it's just going to cut off dead. So set that so it can drop nicely down to nothing. Okay, and the fixed crossfade point, you can just set that to zero seconds. No need to have any kind of fixed crossfade point on there. Um, and change your crossfade point detection to about minus 22 dB. Again, that, you'll have to vary that depending on how your audio process is set up. But change that to minus 22 dB and give that a try. Minimum fade time, 100 milliseconds, maybe a little bit short. Tend to have that about 300 milliseconds. Maximum fade time, 6,000 is fine. Do not crossfade or fade anything with 65 seconds or less in duration uncheck that because that will include all your IDs and things like that and you want to be able to uh, I mean you can set them of course you can set them each song individually on on Sam which is the great thing about it but um, overall you would want to crossfade those uh, because you want those to mix into your songs as well as anything else you know if that's got a, if it if your ID has got a nice sort of sweep sweeping ending um, with a fade out, uh, uh, then you know a swishy fade out or something like that. You want it to uh, mix nicely with the next track, so disable that. So there we go. We've got our main settings. We've got fade out is enabled, fade out, fade in, disabled, and just give that a try because you'll probably find that that mixes the tracks together nice and nice and tightly, but also just sounds a lot slicker than the default settings. Now, in addition to that. Most current tracks are, of course, um, pre-processed, which is a bit of a shame, but this, the gap killer settings are also a little bit strange. Um, if you, so if you go to the gap killer settings, these are far too aggressive. So remove silence from the beginning of track. Minus 20 dB, really? You can have tracks that can start at minus 20 dB with, with stuff that you would want to hear on the track, as far as I'm concerned. So I would change that to minus 40 and silence from the end of a track based on our previous settings, I would also change that to minus 40. You might even want to push that a little bit further and go to minus 45. So remove silence from the end of the tracks. Yes, admittedly, once you sort of get to the minus 45 dB with the processor that's going to be pushing levels up, you're kind of getting into territory where you're not going to want to hear that stuff anyway. Uh, no track's going to be down that low. Um, but, you know, minus 20... Yes, some old stuff. If you look at discs before they were pre-processed, some 80s sort of 80s and earlier 90s discs, they the levels on them were horrendously low, and you really you don't want it just to, to randomly cut off at weird times and try and kill the gap. So definitely change that as well. And uh, blips and glips, uh, 
sorry, skip blips. I usually push that up to about 20 milliseconds. So they are, in my opinion, the best settings to use for the type of uh, flow and, and, and kind of tightness of the music that I like personally. But uh, yeah, the main tip here is just change the settings in the crossfader section and the gap killer section from the defaults.